Now to that special story we've been talking about here is a story of a young woman whose love for soccer was so intense she decided to give up a lucrative regular job uh, from in the corporate world to start a soccer academy which she calls Soccer and Me. Sudarshan reports. For Kalpana, a football player by training, it was hard to decide when she had to choose between a regular job and her passion for soccer. But her love for the game was irresistible. She quit her job and started an academy which she named Soccer and Me. I was working with a corporate company and uh, due, due to the passion for football, I always used to take leave and then try to find time for coaching. Then I thought I, I was interested in developing them. Then I was thinking, why am I doing something, you know, I was uh, in a confusion, which I have to select, whether I have to do the corporate uh, job or should I look in for the football. Then I decided I like football more. So that's how this academy was born. Since May this year, when the academy opened, 50 young players have been training here. Some of them were sent overseas for international exposure. It was a different experience to me. We learned uh, new skills from those AFC coaches. Some women from the Tamil Nadu force too have been training at the academy. Five years ago, the police department was not allowed to go. Now, the soccer academy is not allowed to go. We have learned a lot of things. We have learned a lot of skills. We have joined the academy. We have done a lot of work in all India. We have done a lot of work in the police team. We have done a lot of work in all India. We have done a lot of work in all India. The academy is the only place in Chennai where young soccer enthusiasts are trained as referees. Kalpana says she has plans to involve well-known coaches and referees in the training sessions. In Chennai, with Sudarshan, this is Ashmit Kumar for NDTV Hindu. We're now joined in the studio by Kalpana Das herself, who's a former football player of the Tamil Nadu squad, of course. Now, thank you very much, Kalpana, for joining us today and, and sort of bringing to light this special story of yours. Now, you were a work, working professional just a couple of months ago, and then you shifted to a full-time uh, coach, uh, being a full-time coach. Now, where did this entire dream come about from? Have you been dreaming it for a very long time? It's just that you've been able to kickstart it only now? See, actually, I started off my career. It just took on like that. Okay, and in corporate world, in corporate uh, career, like uh, in my professional, I've already attended the standard where I have to be. And since when I was working as in a lower grade, then it was easy for me to, you know, combine sport as well as the my work in the office. But uh, when I attended a senior position, there, the everything started off. I was not able to concentrate on football because I was always asked to stay in my office. So there I didn't find a time to coach. So, so you did try balancing the two out, a corporate yes. world as well as being a coach at the same I time. Because I money to support my family. I have a son. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, that's, that's quite a focus really. But, but it's quite a decision to step out of uh, you know, a comfort zone where you have uh, your income flowing in for your family. And then you know, choosing, to, choosing to opt for a dream, sort of, sort of to support others as well, other soccer fans mm -hmm. as well. Exactly. I was also thinking what am I going to do after leaving the job but one point of time I decided what am I doing in life whether what I wanted to do something what I wanted and what I liked so I just balanced both and I and I opted for, uh, for uh, to coach football okay now coaching football obviously requires financial aid so uh, especially to kick start an academy so where could you give us the details of how you know you got this financial aid where did it come from you know did uh, was there any helping hand that uh, supported you actually it's uh, 15 years i have been in the football field uh, in coaching and uh, for 15 years i have not earned not a single pie and it was the first time in dharmapuri when i got an assignment from all india football association as a spotter and that was my first earning of 500 rupees a day okay then I was deciding I think I like football I think I could also make some money you know where I can stand and then I started coaching the kids where I started charging the kids who can you know give and then taking the money from them and developing football I conduct tournaments for the other people those who cannot offer like you know club tournaments or for the kids or kids itself because football can grow in India only by the number of increase in the number of tournaments so that is what I've identified and uh, to run that also every time a sponsor is not going to come in and of course I should be thankful to my friends who are supporting me in this
All right, so it was a definite slow, steady process to success at, yes. at this point now. Now, we all know that football is definitely a very popular game and followed by a lot of uh, uh, people in the country. But there are youngsters who are talented but are still hesitant and reluctant to go for the sport, you know, uh, take to the sport as a full-time career. What is your opinion on this? See, actually, even in my academy also, there are many players who wanted to make uh, football as a career. But as the time and thing goes, everything keeps changes. Like for me, example, I one point of time I was peak in my football career. Then suddenly got married, settled and everything. Then I started concentrating on my, uh, towards my uh, professional line. Then again, I have come back to football. So that's what happens in everybody's life. Okay, now stepping aside from that, now let, let's focus on the academy itself that you have constructed right from scratch. How many uh, players do you take in? What uh, do you provide them with? You know, the stra uh, training structure, etc. Could you brief us on that? See, how we are different from the other academy, how I want to be different from the other academy is, I want the players in my academy to feel the game, to, you know, have the vibe of the game and then play. Not that I just wanted to win the trophy. I don't want them to have that idea. They should like the game. Only then they will come forward and they will continue to play. Like, I enjoyed the game. When I was in Asara, I used to take the football to the ground and start kicking it. <laughs> okay, that's because I love the game. Okay. So same way, even my players also, I want them to love the game. Only when, you're, when, only when you love the game, the interest level will increase. And only then you will also think, okay, in one standard they will think, okay, now I am retired from football, let me do something towards the game. You know, like sponsoring small children's or, you know, there are so many things that you can do in football. So... So it looks like you have quite a big heart, uh, not just as a person, but also towards football. Uh, now, before we end this discussion, could you just uh, give a, uh, sort of give the viewers and the people who are big uh, footy fans and soccer uh, players at this point, any advice for them? Advice for them is they are watching now the program because they love football. <laughs> that itself is the thing. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll uh, call it an end to this discussion. Thank you so much for joining us yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, today, Kalpana. Uh, it's quite a special story that you've started a uh, footy academy all by yourself. Now, speaking of football, uh, a trouble